Alright, so I know I created a lecture, but why don't I see the file open? I guess I didn't tell it to create a new file. That was dumb. Now yeah, I'm going to make a new one then. Please do create me a main class. Thank you very much. All right. So hopefully by now, you've encountered the idea of binary. Where you have something like a string of zeros and ones that looks like this. And you can convert that to decimal, base 10, or vice versa, because binary is base 2. Well, the way that works is that each one of these is a power of 2. So rather than 1, 10, 100, 1,000, this is 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. This one's 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. This is 2 squared, which is 4. This is 2 cubed, which is 8. 2 to the whatever is 16. 2 to the whatever is 32. And it just keeps going, right? So if we spaced all these out, and you really don't have to type these in your notes, Hopefully you've seen that before. So this number is equal to 32, but there's no 16s, so 32 plus 8, because there is an 8. There's no 4s, so don't type that 4, plus a 2. And so that's equal to 42 total. What if we wanted to print out a binary value? What if we wanted to pass in 42 and get a nice binary value out? Well, as I recently discovered when I had some questions about it in Python, it's not so easy to do in this language as it is in Python. Surprise, surprise. So, there is something that will easily convert an integer to binary, and it's just part of the integer class, integer dot, right, whatever. But it doesn't pack it with leading zeros. What does that mean? I had this number 101010, right? 101010. A byte is 8 bits. It would be nice if we had 8 digits here, but we don't. We only have 6. So we'd like to pack it with leading zeros. If there's a way of doing it, my searches and Stack Overflow and, and my thinking about it hasn't come up with a way of doing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert it to binary and it's going to give us this string. And then we're going to use string.format to pad it out to eight spaces, right? And so now we have two spaces at the beginning. And then we're going to replace all spaces with zeros. And then we finally have it padded out to the correct number of bits, right? And if we wanted 16 bits or 32 bits or whatever, we could do that. An integer is a 32-bit number. And a long is a 64-bit number. And a byte is an 8-bit number. You know, So we could write a different way of doing it to get 32 bits or 8 bits or 16 bits, but let's play with it. So here's our number, the one that we want to translate to binary. So string bits is equal to integer dot to string. This is not the correct answer, by the way. Parentheses none. Now, if I print out bits, it's just going to print out 42. That has converted it to a string. That is like the canonical textbook way of converting something to a string. Or you could, and I'm going to comment this out, bits is equal to empty quote plus num. Same thing, right? Declare an empty string, append the number, let the compiler you know, convert that to a string, and boom. I like that way, just because it's really far shorter, right? OK, but along with two string, there's also two hex string, if you love your hexadecimal digits, or to binary string. Now let's print our number and our binary string out. Just, I'm going to put a blank line here because I'm probably going to put lines of code above it. System.out.println. Let's use printf. Quote percent %d for that number. Heck, let's make it percent Oh, we'll just leave a percent D. We'll get fancier in a minute. And then percent S, because bits is a string. And so after the quote and the comma, we want to print the number and the bits that resulted. And we should see 101010. 
just like we calculated here. And we did. I forgot to put my backslash in, so it didn't go to the next line. But we now have a way of converting. But I wanted to pad it out. I want to pad it out to 16 or 32 or something like that. Now, there's 8 bits in a byte, but a long can go up to 32. Why don't we pad it out with 32? So here's what we need to do. Bits equals bits dot, excuse me, string dot format, parentheses, quote. And how many spaces do we want it to wide? Let, let's do 32. Because an int is 32 bits long. Percent 32s, end quote comma, bits. Change that string, pad it out with 32 spaces. And it's going to be left just, excuse me, right justified. So there's going to be all sorts of spaces in front of it. Let's prove that. Let's run it again and we'll see how our output has changed. All right, woohoo. I still haven't put my backslash in there. I'll do that right now because I keep forgetting. Here we go, right? Whole bunch of spaces. Let's replace those guys. I have you open. Bits equals bits dot replace parentheses double quote space double quote replace every space and after that end quote comma another quote zero end quote. So replace every space with a zero. Now it's going to look perfect. And there are other ways of writing this function. You can divide by two over and over and over, powers of two, and record the remainders and stuff like that. But this is really good enough. There we go. Kind of long. But it's correct. It'd be cool to move that into its own method. Let's do that. Public static, it needs to return a string of bits. String bits from int parentheses int num in parentheses semicolon now we're just going to copy these three lines here, or cut them, cut them, paste them here, and return the results, return bits. So cut those guys, paste them here, return bits. Add your semicolon after the return statement. Okay. So now when I want to print my bits out, I just call that function. Now it would be awesome if we went to the trouble of allowing ourselves to pass in that 32, right? Wouldn't that be neat? That takes considerably more effort. I'm sure I asked a question like this. We need to create this format string. So here's what we're going to try. Let's pass in the number of bits. I don't even know what to call that. I, because I'm not coming up with a clever name where I is the number of bits. The path. <coughs> How many spaces do we want? Width. I like that. Width. Okay. So we need to construct this formatting string. Bless you. If we weren't constructing it, if we were just assigning it, it would look like this. I would cut that, make a string called format, or s, why not use s, just to be clear, is equal to that, semicolon, and I could put that here, right? That works just as well, using format but passing in a string. But we don't want it to always be 32, we want it to be width. So cutting this up a little bit, percent, end quote, plus concatenate our width, plus conc 
concatenate a quote as quote, and now we can pass in a width. Any old time we want. We want it padded out to eight characters, great. We put comma eight. Want to pad, pad it out to 32? Cool. Let's try it out. String bits equals bits from INT, capital F, capital I, or whatever you made this, right? You could just copy and paste that. Parentheses, and we want to convert number, and I want to see eight bits. I want to see it padded out to eight. And it worked. Padded it out to eight spaces, about 16. All right, so the last lines we've changed is we changed that line. We've changed that line, and that's the wrong symbol. That's Python, isn't it? We changed that line, and we added a width parameter variable to that one. And then we did this line right here. So those are the changes we've made so far to what we had. I'm going to run it and see it padded out to 16 bits. And lo and behold, it is. Pad it back out to 8 bits. The reason I would like 8 bits is because an ASCII character, a text character, is encoded with 8 bits. An ASCII value is a value between 0 and 127, where each value represents a different character. Or if it gets larger than 127, it's an extended ASCII value, which is a graphics character. All right. So, what's next? Shifting. What is shifting? Say you add this number, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, right? You had an 8-bit number that looked like that. And then you wanted to shift everything one bit to the left. That's what the arrows mean. If you've taken C++, it does not mean what it did in C++, right? Arrow, arrow meant something completely different. Now it means shift. What it means is that all the bits are going to march one to the right, because this is shifting to the right. If I said left, I was wrong. The arrows are pointing to the right, so it's going to shift one to the right. And once it's done, it's going to look like this. Instead of having three zeros at the end of it, it's going to only have two. Let me just put it under here, right? It's going to look like this. See what happened? All these ones marched one to the right. And we had to fill it in with something here at the end. So we just stuck a zero there. What if you shifted it to? We could certainly do that as well. I'm just going to copy those two lines. Right? I'm going to come down here. These bits need to go over by two. So these two bits are going to wander until they are there. So they're going to look like this, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Wait, wait, where'd that 1 come up? There, like that. OK, so that's shifting. You can also shift to the left. You just use the, uh, and when I say error, I mean greater than, greater than, or less than, less than. So this is shifting to right. Now let's shift some stuff to the left. Let's just say I'm going to even only type 4 bits because that's enough. Well, 8 bits, why not? 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Now, what is that? That's a 1, but there's no 2s, there's no 4s. There's an 8 there, so that's a 9. And we're going to shift it right, excuse me, left. Apparently, I'm dyslexic. Going left one bit. So all the 1s are going to march 1 over, right? Just like that. You see the pattern, the 1001 is right there now. So what is that number? Well, there's no 1s, but there's a 2. There's no 4s, but there's no 8s, but there's a 16. So 2 plus 16 is equal to 18. Let's shift it twice. Hey, where am I? OK, shifting it two times. Well. 
Now, the 1, 0, 0, 1 is going to start right here, right? 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Right? They moved over 2. Now, what is that number? There's no 1s, there's no 2s, but there's a 4. There's no 8s, no 16s, but there's a 32. And 32 plus 4 is 36. What have I done? I messed up my copying here. That needs to go here. This needs to go here. This was an 18. No, that's still a 9, right? But this became a 36. Take a look. Take a look at something. 9 became 18 when we shifted it once. When we shifted it twice, it became 36. See a pattern? 9, 18, 36. I guarantee you that if we shifted it again, it would be 72. If we shifted it again, it would be 144. And if we shift it again, well, then it's no longer going to be what we expect because the bits are going to slide off the end, fall into the bit bucket. So shifting to the left is just like doing integer multiplication by 2. doubling it the right number of times, right? So if you shift it left three times, you double it three times. But we're not going to do that because that requires using the, you know, the math processing, where a shift is something that is insanely fast inside the computer. Computers could shift before they could do larger math. So, and then shift right is like integer division by two. Integer multiplication by two. You know, or doubling and halving is a good way to think of it. Shift left is doubling and shift right is halving. So this number here, it was, there's no ones, there's no twos, there's no fours, but there's an eight and a 16. So that was a 24. And if I figured it out, there's no ones, there's no two, but there's a four and an eight, so it's 12. So 24 turned into 12. And this 24 turned into 6, because 6 is half of 12. And if we did it again, then we'd only have two bits here. And that's a 1 and a 2, and so that's a 3. So shifting a 3 would leave us with a value of 3. And if we shift it a fourth time, well, bits start falling off. Let me just copy and paste that. Change this to 3. Change this to 4. Add 1 zero here. Add two zeros there. You see what's going on? We're starting to lose digits. It's just a fact of life. If you shift too far one way, you lose digits. If you shift too far, you lose digits. There is a concept of shifting with wraparound to where if there was a one here, or you know when that one fell off the, the map there, it would reappear here, but I don't know how to do that. So how do you shift in this language? Well, you just use those arrows, just like I was showing. Let's shift number once to the right. So num equals num, shift, shift, one. Now take this part here and copy and paste it so we can print it out again. Right? We don't need to read a clear bits, but we want the rest of it. And then do it again, right? Shift it one more time. Now we're going to go off the map here because 42 doubled, maybe not, is 84. Doubled again is 168. That still fits within 8 bits, but the next time we did it, we're going to see the bits start to disappear. So I'm just going to copy and paste that one more time, just for our elucidation. All right, that didn't look too good, right? So we need to modify our print statement a little bit so that it, each one of these is padded out by 2. Actually, I want to pad it out by 3. I've forgotten what that number is. It, do, it no longer looks correct because it seems to be having here. 
Oh, I made it go to the right again. All right. I want to uh, change it so that it says percent 3D, percent 3D, percent 3D, and percent 3D. Uh, whoopsie. That'll probably, I'm not going to print more than, you know, 999. So that'll do the trick, right? And there we go. We're shifting to the right, and so we're dividing by 2 each time. If we divide it by 2 again, 5 divided by 2 integer math is just going to be 2. Let's do that. Or let's pick a new value. Let's pick the ASCII value of A. And then start shifting it to the left. So how do we get the ASCII value of A? We use casting. Num is equal to parentheses int int or in you know int in parentheses single quote a in single quote. Now just from experience, I know that a capital A is a 65, and a capital B is a 66, and a capital C is a 67, and so on. Well, let's print it out. Let's take these two lines. Copy that. Paste it. So what we're going to do is C65 and then some representation of the bits that add up to 65. Just like that. And if we did B, we'd see, you know, whatever the next one was and so on. But let's shift. This time let's shift to the left. Oh, I always do that. So copy one of these three blocks, but change the greater than, greater than to less than, less than. I'm going to copy that block, paste it here, change greater than, greater than. That's a shift right to less than, less than, shift left. And there we go. Now the ASCII chart, as far as typewriter characters go, ends at 126, and I'll show that to you. ASCII with two eyes, table.com. The ASCII characters start. How do I get over there? Where's my scroll bar? Oh, it's right there. It's just black. Okay. The ASCII characters start with 32, which is a space, and they end at 126, which is a tilde. You know, that character below the escape key. Below 32, they are these control characters. Backs, you know, tabs and new lines and things that nobody uses anymore. We could use these ASCII values to kind of encode our message with what's known as Caesar cipher. What does that mean? Like, what if you took that 65 and you added one to it, and then you printed its letter value out, it would print B, right? So if you had the word bad, instead of saying B, A, D, each one would be increased by one. So it would print C, B, E. That's not too hard to do. But firstly, before we get there, why don't we print out all the bits of some kind of string, a short string. I don't want it to be absurd. But we have these functions, bits from int, all we have to do is write a for loop and declare our string. So string, whatever, clear text, plain text, yeah, plain text, string plain text is equal to Abel Fred, in quote semicolon. Now let's use a for loop just to print all the letters. This would work in Python. Don't type this here because it won't work here. For ch in plain text. I wish Java did that. Instead, we have to use an index counter. So for parentheses, int i equals 0, semicolon. And then we have to go out to the length of the plain text. So i is less than plain text dot length, semicolon. I plus plus. Now we have an index. We can get that get that character out. 
Oh, and I'm sorry, length is a function. It's a method, so I need my parentheses after it. Now let's get our character. Care ch is equal to our string, which is plain text, not print text, plain text dot care at with a capital A, I. And before we go any further, let's just print that out. Make sure we like what we're seeing. System dot out dot print ln ca parentheses ch in parentheses. Just so that we can see the letters. Make sure our loop is working. Why type 50 more lines of code if we're not sure our loop's going to work? All right, it's working. Let's do something cooler with it. Let's convert it into an ASCII value and add a shift value to it. We need a variable to tell us what we're shifting by. Are we just shifting by one? And by the way, when we say shift now, we mean something in the bitwise shift, right? Now we're actually going up and down the alphabet, but the word is used the same, right? Because we're sh like shifting our A's to B's and our B's to C's. Let's declare a shift value. Int shift equals, and let's just shift everything one, because it's easy to spot, right? A's turning into B's and B's turning into C's. So let's get the integer value. So it's going to be, we've already used i, int space ASCII, ASC, right? The ASCII value equals, let's cast it to an int. So parentheses int in parentheses, ch. And now, instead of printing out CH, why don't we print out that ASCII value? Just make sure that we love what's going on so far. And there we go. Right? ASCII value of A is 95. What's a B? Let's go check. A lowercase b is, if I can see, a lowercase b is a 98. And, uh, a little thing to note is that the uppercase letters are 32 below the lowercase letters. So if you know the ASCII value of uppercase A, you just add 32 to it and you get the ASCII value of lowercase A. I don't know why they didn't make A start with 64. Why not make there? I mean, anyways, I'm sure there's an incredibly awesome reason for it. Okay, so we're getting there. Let's build out, let's build, we don't need to do this right now, a string of our characters. Now we haven't adjusted the character yet, but that's okay. That just means that the output string is going to be the same as the input string until we start modifying this. So we need to declare an empty string so that we can start appending things to it. So how about string coded? Because this is the coded text. String coded equals empty quotes. Now let's add our new character to it. And I'm honestly slightly surprised that this works, but because they're different types. But coded plus equals parentheses C H A R in parentheses A S C semicolon. Right? We're just taking that ASCII value, converting it back to a character, and tacking it on. So I hope you can see that the coded string and the plain text are going to be exactly the same at this point. They better be, because we haven't done anything to the ASCII value. We haven't shifted it or anything. So system.out.println, parentheses, plain text, in parentheses, semicolon, and system.out.println, parentheses, coded in parentheses, semicolon. Now when I run it, I want to see Abel Fred printed two times in a row. Right, okay, cool. Let's add one to our ASCII value. Now this is not gonna be our final answer. We're gonna to have to do something more than this, but let's do ask ASC 
plus equals shift. We're going to take our shift value, which right now just happens to be 1. Now it's not going to look the same from beginning to end. The A's are going to turn into B's, the B's are going to turn into C's, and so on. There we go. Awesome possum. What happens if we add a larger number? What if we shift by more than one? I'm going to shift by, what did we say? 32 is the difference between lowercase and uppercase. So now my uppercase A should turn into a lowercase A, and heaven knows what the rest of this is going to turn into, but that F is going to turn into a lowercase F. Okay, we're getting garbage. Why are we getting garbage? Because a B is a 98. We add 32 to it, and that's 130. We scroll over here. We're going to have to find out that it's some extended character that uh, Python, excuse me, that Java can't even display. That particular font doesn't even have that character. We don't want our character to get above 126. If it gets to 127, we want to subtract a value from it that will get it back down to 32. So, 127, 32, the difference I believe is 65. So if it's greater than 127, we want to subtract 65. That's just an if statement. There may be a more elegant way of doing it than this, but I don't know it. So if... Wait, let's do that before we convert it back to a character. So underneath the ASC plus equals shift, if parentheses, ASC is greater than 126 in parentheses, larger than highest ASCII value, then subtract 65 from it. ASC minus equals 65. Wrap around to lower chart. And then we got to do the opposite, right? Because if it gets below 32, we better add something to it. Same number, actually. Because if we get below 32, we're down into control characters. And so that means that we need to wrap around back up into the high numbers. So, else if, parentheses, ASC, ASC less than 32, smaller than smallest ASCII value, which is not strictly true, but the printable characters. So how about I add the word printable here? Larger than the highest printable. That's not how you spell printable. Printable and smaller than the smallest printable ASCII value. Okay. In that case, we're going to add 65 to it. AC plus equals 65. Why? So that 32 would become 126. How do you get 32 to be 1? Excuse me, so that 31 would become 126. So that 31 would be 126. To get 31 to get to 126, you add 65. So plus equals 65, semicolon. Wrap around to higher chart. I sure hope that's right. But so 120. Six minus thirty-two is ninety-four, not sixty-five. Where'd I come up with sixty-five then? Ninety-four? <laughs> I really thought it was something that ended in five. Is it ninety-five and I'm just flaking out totally? We want Masky table. We want a 31 to become 
a 126. So 126 minus 31 95, not 65. Okay, okay, now I'm feeling happier again. And my dyslexia is kicking in again. There we go. I'm not really making a joke. I really do flip my lefts and rights and flip my numbers up and down all the time. Doesn't stop me from programming. Let's give it a shot. All right. As predicted, uppercase A turned into lowercase A, uppercase F turned into lowercase F, and so on. Right? So what would be the useful thing to do? To take this and turn it into a function. Excuse me, a method. So that we, I mean, because the next thing I want to do is to take my coded and convert it back into plain text and see if it's the same after the round trip. But I don't want to copy and paste all this. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's take the entire for loop, cut it, and let's just call it Caesar. Code it equals Caesar parentheses plain text comma shift. That's how we want it to work. That function doesn't exist yet, so we're getting an error. Method. The method because it's a part of a class. That method doesn't exist yet, but it will as soon as we go and paste. Go do it. Needs to return a string. Public static string. Caesar. String. Plain text. Comma. Int shift. In parentheses. Open brace close brace and then there we're going to paste our for loop and we have a little bit left to do which is that we no longer have a string called coded so right here above everything above our for loop and I better tab that over it's confusing me above our for loop we need to define our coded string again string coded equals empty to return. So right above the end of my method, this is the end of Caesar method, return coded. What's this cute little warning down here? Assigned value never moved or used. Okay, fine. There. String coded. Coded is equal to Caesar plain text. Now let's get it back. Let's unencode it, right? So string unencoded equals Caesar coded, comma, by the negative version of shift, right? So zero minus shift. Flip it, make it negative. Or we could two, write two functions, right? We could write two methods, one called encode and one called decode. Oh, it's clear why that's a negative version of that, right? Or I could make it negative one time shift, whatever. And let's print it out as well. System.out.println parentheses unencoded. And just to make it prettier, I'm going to cut this and paste it above my prints so that all three prints are in a row. And it'll be a miracle if it works. Let's try it. Yeah, see? It used this string as input, shifted at negative 32 back to being able to get to Abel Fred. I hope that makes sense. What could you do to make this better? Well, instead of just shifting by 
one two three four five six and so on excuse me instead of shifting everything by the same value you could shift it by one and then the next letter would be shifted by two and the third letter would be shifted by three and so on now if we were going to get that fancy i really would want two copies of this i would want one called encode and one called decode or I'm going to have to do something fancy and make the shift value check to see if it's negative so that that value can continue getting more and more negative. I guess that wouldn't be too hard, but I don't want to, I don't want to mess with that, especially since that's one of the uh, semester projects that will be coming up in the next class. Excuse me, in the second eight weeks. All righty. So, bitwise and, bitwise or, is this working for everybody? Or anybody need type up? All right, let me come help So we know what AND and OR means. Start new notes. <laughs> AND means that if you have a true and true, the result is true. True and false, the result is false. False and true, the result is false. And false and false, the result is false. In this language, you use ampersands to represent and. So you know all this already, but I'm going to be modifying it just a little bit, telling us something new. Oh, come on. I have to learn a keyboard, new, different keyboard in every class. I should bring my own keyboard. All righty. And there we go. Right? Hopefully that looks familiar. Zeros and ones. One and one, notice the single ampersand, is equal to one. One ampersand zero is equal to zero. Zero ampersand one is equal to zero. And zero ampersand zero is equal to zero. There we go. Yeah, so what? Okay, what if you had a series of bits that look like this? Our good old 101010, right? 101010, 101010. Just say that we had that. And we wanted to and that with 111000. That's not enough. I wanted uh, eight bits. So there we go. Well, to get that, let's line them up. 101010, and it with 111100. And we just and the columns, right? That column, one and one make a one. O and one make an O, right? O and one make a zero. One and one make a one. Zero and one make a zero. And all the rest of these are gonna be zeros, right? Because anything ended with a zero, zero. So when you and that to that, you get that. It's also called masking. If I want the first four bits of this, I could take that number, mask it by anding it with all ones, and then I could shift the result over by four. And if I shifted it over by four, then what would my result be? Oh, 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 one, oh, one, oh. I have now gotten the first four bits. In this particular case, I could have just shifted it by four anyways, right? And the other bits would have rolled off. But even if I hadn't shifted it, I now have the first four bits. So anding is masking. What about or? What if I have this number, 1010101010? And I hope you know that how it works with ors. If you have one or single bar, one, that's a one, right? But one or zero, just like true or false, is still a one. False or true is still a one. And the only time that or is false is when neither side is true. So let's take our number 1010101 and or it against the number 0011100. Bitwise. All right, our rules. One and zero come up to a one.
0 and 0, what do they OR to? 0. How about 1 and 0, what do they OR to? Y'all get this, right? True or false. What is it? True or false? That's a true one. Right. And so 0 and 1 makes it true. 1 and 1 makes it true. 0 and 1 makes it true. 1 and 0 makes it true. And 0 and 0. There. Right? So, by oaring it against that, we set all of those bits. To retrieve the first four bits, to retrieve some bits, you use AND. To encode the bits, to add the bits, to set them all on, you use OR. Bless you. So, let's take our ASCII values and just get the last four bits. To do that, we're going to have to or against that. And what is that number? That's a 1 plus a 2 plus a 4 plus an 8. So we will have to or against 15. 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 is 15. Excuse me, we'll have to and it against that. Where's our main? Here's our main. Okay. Let's run through our our string again, four parentheses, int i equals zero, semicolon i less than plain text dot length, parentheses in parentheses, semicolon i plus plus. Let's get that character out, char ch. You know, we don't even have to extract it like that. Int asc equals parentheses, int in parentheses, plain text dot care at, with capital I, parentheses I in parentheses. You see, we didn't need a temporary variable to hold it. We could just retrieve the value, cast it to an int, and store it right away. Now let's mask that value. And lo and behold, I've forgotten what the symbol for masking is. Java mask operators, not mask, um, bitwise and operators. Oh, it's just ampersand, and I, I already said that. I guess I didn't forget. Okay. So, we're going to take that value, ASC equals ASC and 15, which is 00001111. Zero, 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 one, 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 one. So, we can get the last four bits. And let's print them out. Let's pretty print them. Bits equals bits from capital F, INT, parentheses, ASC, comma, A, in parentheses, semicolon. Now we erase the original value here. I don't know if that's the best thing to do. Maybe we should have saved it. Maybe we should have made this INT ASC2, right? So that we'd have the original value to play with. And so I'd have to change that to that as well. Just so that we can print them out side by side. Oh, this is just opening all sorts of cans of worms. I, I wish I hadn't done that. I'm going to leave it alone. I've totally broken it. Eh, there we go. I should have just done it. No, I think I'm going to go back, and I'm sorry for being wishy-washy. ASC2 is equal to ASC, ampersand that. Bits is equal to that, but let's call this bits2 because it's dealing with ASC2. So string bits2, and this needed to be an INT in front of it. All right, so I've changed that one umpteen times, and then I changed this one to match bits2, but I also want to know the original bits, right? 
So bits is equal to bits from IMT, the original value, which was just ASC, comma A, in parentheses semicolon. It's not liking this. The assigned value. Oh, okay. come on. All right. Well, why aren't you complaining about this one? We never use that assigned value either. And let's print them out. System.out.println parentheses. Oh, that's why I should have gotten the character out so I could print it, right? Oh, well. Bits plus a space plus bits to, in parentheses, semicolon. And there we go, right? We're seeing the last four bits. Only the last four bits. Why do you care? Why do you want to be able to do stuff like that? Well, check this out. Um, IP header. Now, the IP protocol was developed in like the late 70s. The first four bits indicate something. The next four bits indicate IHL, whatever that is, right? These eight bits indicate TTL or whatever. So if you read all this into a 32-bit number and you wanted to get that, you'd have to use AND to extract just those four bits. And then you might shift them, you know, shift them enough so that they would be against some border so that you can inspect them. All right, we're almost done with this kind of stuff. Good thing, because we're almost done with the class. This is the end of main. So, int, I'm buying a car, and I want power steering, int, and I want a stereo. Talking about the 70s when these things things weren't necessarily in there. And I want pinstripes. And I want what's another option? Leather seats. So our options, options for our first car. The first car wants power steering or single, single bar, stereo. He wants the works or pinstripes or leather. That's what the customer one wants. And options two is equal to this guy just wants a stereo or single bitwise or, or leather. Let's print those out. System.out.println parentheses customer1 or let's just call it options1, right? Options1 end quote plus and let's call our good old bits from int bits from int passing in options one and let's just get four bits out of it that's enough so why is this going to work because this is equal to zero 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 one this is equal to zero zero one zero this is equal to zero one zero zero and this is equal to 1000. So if this bit is set, it means they want leather seats. If this bit is set, it means they want power steering. If this bit is set, it means that they want pinstripes. And then just copy that and make it say options two, right? We're printing out options one and options two.
and there we go right options one he wanted everything one 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 the second one just wanted the first option and the third option or whatever right they're kind of in the opposite order but they wanted leather and they wanted stereo how do you find that out okay does options one include power steering let's find out if options one single ampersand power steering What are you complaining about? Hopefully it'll go away. Type cannot be converted to Boolean. Okay, fine. Put an extra, put e or greater than zero here. Put parentheses around it. All right, great. Right, because if you and the two together, if you and it against 0001, you check to see if that bit is set. That means they want power steering. So system dot out. Oh heck, let's make a string called options. String options equals quote quote semicolon. And if they wanted power steering, options plus equals quote power steering period, space, in parentheses, semicolon. Now we're going to do the same thing for stereo and for pinstripes and for leather. Ah, let's just do two of them. It's proving the point, right? I don't think we need those braces. Why don't we? It wouldn't take that long, though, right? Copy and paste that three more times and change them to match our options. They want a stereo. Change this to stereo. They want pinstripes. Change that to pinstripes. And they want, what's the last option? Leather. Change that to leather. Now, since an int has 32 bits. You can encode 32 true-false values in, into a single int like that. This is kind of more old-school C programming. You don't see this so much in Java. But somebody could create a header block like we saw on IP, on the IP header, TCP IP header, and th things can be set like this in it. And let's print our options, right? System dot out dot print ln parentheses options one options I know that's a bit silly equals end quote plus options and it's going to print out all all four of those and there we go right his options are power steering stereo pinstripes and leather and if we wanted to, we could do the same thing with options too. Not going to bother, right? But we could. I think that's enough. I think it proves the point. Does that make sense? We're setting the individual bits. And the reason why it works is because we're setting them to values that are equal to the individual bits. 1, 2, 4, 8. What if we needed uh, four more? We'd use 16, 32, 64, and 128. So, homework based on this idea. Ask the user for a string of text, whatever they want to type in, I don't care. Add up the ASCII values of all the characters in the text with a for loop. Display all the ASCII values of the characters in the text and the total.
and I'm going to insert the word total here, right? Add up, total, you know, that's a better, better programming word than add up. All right, hope that makes sense, especially based on what we've done today. You should know how to print out all the ASCII values now. You just cast them to ints. Once you've cast them to ints, it's easy to add them to a total, right? It's just a loop, just like our four loops up here have been, like that. All right, hope that makes sense. Hopefully a short assignment, but if it gets confusing, text me and ask me. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? All right, let's stop here.